Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Han's classroom. So this week there is a new coronavirus variant, the Lambda variant, is starting to catch people's attention. And there are also two new preprint articles came out last week talking about how Lambda variant responds to antibodies that are produced by either the CoronaVac, the Chinese-made vaccine, or the mRNA vaccines. Now, a few of you have already asked me to talk about the Lambda variants and give an update on the Chinese vaccine. So this week, let's combine these topics and have a deeper look. So without further ado, let's head to the screen. Fact number one, what mutated in the Lambda variant? There are six different mutations observed on the spike protein of the Lambda variant. We focus more on the spike protein because it is the part that allows the virus to bind and enter our cells. It is also the protein that is targeted by vaccines and monoclonal antibody therapy. If you want to learn more about the basic differences between vaccine-stimulated antibodies and therapeutic antibodies, you can check out this one-minute short and brief video after watching this video. The link is in the description box down below. Some familiar mutations such as the T859N are also found in a variant first isolated in New York. The Lambda variant also contained the first significant mutation D614G observed very early during the pandemic. In addition, the Lambda variant also contained two brand new mutations, the L452Q and F490S. The L452Q mutation is actually very similar mutation to the Delta variant, and therefore it is hypothesized that Lambda also has a higher transmissible than the original strain and the F490S is actually a brand new mutation first observed. Fact number two, how is the Lambda variant affecting South American countries? The Lambda variant has been seen in more than 20 countries, including in the US, but primarily they're from the South American countries, such as Chile, Peru, Ecuador, and Argentina. According to the Peru INS and Health Ministry, the Lambda variant is now responsible for about 71% of all new COVID cases, and in Chile, about 32% of new cases are caused by the Lambda variant. This is quite different than what we are seeing in the US and UK where the Delta variant is dominating. In Chile, over 65% of the adult population have already been fully vaccinated, and about 78% of the vaccinated adults received two doses of the Chinese-made inactivated virus vaccine, the CoronaVac vaccine, despite the overall higher vaccination rate than in the U.S. as seen in this well, data, Chile is still experiencing higher new COVID cases per million people as of today. This once again raises concerns about the real-world efficacy of the CoronaVac vaccine. Fact number three, what we know so far about Lambda and the CoronaVac vaccine. In a recent preprint article by a group of researchers from Chile, they conducted an in vitro experiment testing how antibodies produced from the coronavac vaccine against different variants. Their experiment collected 75 serum samples from healthcare workers who had been fully vaccinated with the coronavac vaccine and treated with pseudo viruses that carry different types of spike protein. This include the wild type original, the 614G, alpha variant, gamma variant, and most importantly, the lambda version of the spike protein. 
It showed that the antibody neutralization ability on the lambda version is decreased by three times as compared to the original wild type. The authors concluded that the lambda variant are linked to increased infectivity and can escape antibodies elicited by the coronavac vaccine. So, how about lambda variant and mRNA vaccines? Back here in the U.S., researchers from NYU performed similar experiments to test mRNA vaccine elicited antibodies and covalescent serums against the lambda variants. In addition, they also looked at how the monoclonal antibody therapy Regeneron worked against the lambda variant. Similar pseudovirus experiments showed the antibodies elicited by both mRNA vaccines of the Pfizer vaccines and the Moderna vaccines have about 2.5-fold decrease in neutralization ability and in terms of the Regeneron antibody therapies, a monotherapy of just one type of the th antibody, REGN10987, showed a 3.6-fold decrease in neutralization. But when they combined two types of antibodies, REGN10987 and 10933, they did not see a reduction in neutralization ability. However, there are still many questions remain to be answered. All of the in vitro studies focused on how antibodies neutralized these pseudoviruses, but the immune system is much more adequate than just using antibodies to fight infection. We don't know how cytotoxic T cells behave against the lambda variant currently. It is intriguing to see how the in vitro experiments showed the decrease in antibody neutralization ability are quite similar in both coronavac elicited antibody and in mRNA vaccine elicited antibodies. And the overall vaccination rate is higher in Chile, but the case per million in US is still three times lower than in Chile. So this suggests that there may be factors other than the antibodies are contributing to the differences in infective rate in the real world. And lastly, we don't know if the lambda variant is more dangerous or more deadly than the delta variants at this time. So right now, based on the preliminary in vitro experimental data, it looks like the Lambda variant may not be an immediate threat to countries that have been giving out um, vaccines other than the Chinese-made vaccine. So uh, definitely, right now, the Delta variant is more of a concern at this point. And lastly, if you find this video helpful, please don't hesitate to share, like, and uh, comment on this video. Video. And if you would like to receive more regular update on COVID-related science topic and other science content, please consider subscribing to the channel. This channel needs your help to reach more people. So that is all for me this week, and I'll see you again next week. And meanwhile, please stay safe and healthy. Bye.